Good morning. Welcome to Ebenezer United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we are really glad that you are here on this first Sunday of Advent we gather. We are gathered and we are called to worship in so many ways by the sounds of bells chiming in this season. And now we open ourselves to experience the holy in our presence as we are called to this time of worship. In space and time, God's vision is seen. In our space and in our time, God's vision needs to be realized. In this space and at this time, God's spirit is with us. To please rise and sing together, Oh, how shall I receive you? New Century Hymn number 102. Words will also be on the screen. We light the candle of hope because the world is broken and the wait is long, but hope just won't let go. Hope holds space for all our longings, lingers on the edge of harsh realities, like the dawn gently awakening the sky. Keep awake, she whispers, for the world is being made new. Today we light the purple candle, suggesting the first light of morning hope in the night sky. We light one candle because it only takes one. Christ is with us. Our sung response will be the holy fire of Advent, verse number one. Words will be on the screen.
join me as we pray together. So much feels impossible, O oh God. We are looking for what you will do, longing for answers, for help, for inspiration. You offer a vision of hope, simpler than we imagined, and yet beautiful enough to keep us going. You can call us not to only stand there and look for ourselves, but to share it so all may be encouraged. In the midst of everything, we pray that you bless us with the grace to see and to hope for others. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Habakkuk, chapters 1, 1 through 7, chapter 2, 1 through 4, and chapter 3, 3b to 6, and 17 to 19. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen? Or cry to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surrounds the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. God responds, look at the nations and see. Be astonished, be astonished, for a work is being done in your days that you would not believe if you were told. For I am rousing the Chaldeans, that fierce and impetuous nation who march through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own. Dread and fear are they. Their justice and dignity proceed from themselves. Chapter 2, Habakkuk says, I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the proud, their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faithfulness from chapter 3b. The Holy One from Mount Paran, his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of praise. The brightness was like the sun. Rays came forth from his hand where his power lay hidden. Before him went pestilence and plague followed close behind. He stopped and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The eternal mountains were shattered along his ancient pathways. The everlasting hills sank low. Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet feel like the feet of a deer and makes me tread upon his heights. Thus sends our scripture. And now we have special music from the handbells.
you, handbells. And now I invite the children to please come forward. Oh, good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. Look at you jumping out there with a really rousing good morning. I like that. And Jade, thank you for being a helper today. I appreciate you and I appreciate that. So, <clears throat> how many of you like to wait? You like waiting? <clears throat> what do you like waiting for, Kalia? You like waiting for Christmas? Oh my gosh. I'll have to get some parenting advice from your parents, huh? <laughs> uh huh. What do you like waiting for? You you like waiting for your birthday? Wow. Wow. I I am a terrible waiter. I don't know about you, but same. Yeah, I don't like to wait at all. I get impatient and anxious, and I've been known to drive way out of the way to get to certain places in town just so I don't have to stop at stoplights if there's a lot of them. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I have a hard time sometimes with waiting. But waiting is actually kind of a good thing. Because, you know, if you, if you stop and you have to wait, then you, you get a chance to not think of things all the time. You're not constantly paying attention to something, which means if you have a tablet, or a phone or something, put that away sometimes. Did you know, did you know that your brain needs to be bored sometimes? Because do you know what happens when your brain is bored sometimes? That's when you start to daydream. And while some people are like, are you daydreaming? Right, you might get in trouble for it if you do it in school. But taking the time to just to think and be and to look at the world around you as it is and to imagine possibilities that we can't see right now. <laughs> but what might be possible, what might be possible, especially as God works in the world and works through us. So waiting can be a really, really hard thing for most of us. Not you special people, but for most of us. Waiting is hard. And today, in the church, we start a season of waiting. If I said to you, Happy New Year, what would you think? Thank you. <laughs> and you might think, thank you, you're so polite. And you might think, well, I don't know, Reverend Lori, because it hasn't even been Christmas yet, so it can't possibly be New Year, right? Yes, because we're used to the new year being on January 1st, and that is true. The calendar year, right, starts again on January 1st. But in the church, we do things a little bit different. Today is our new year in the church because we start our calendar year in the church with the season of Advent. And Advent is a season of waiting, right? We look at the world, we look around, and we see that, you know what? Things aren't probably as they should be. Things aren't always the way God wants them to be. And we take the time to stop, right? In our waiting, we take the time to stop and to notice that, you know what? Not everything is the way it's supposed to be. But we trust that God is working in that. Now, this season of Advent, the season of waiting, lasts for four weeks-ish, right? How many days are in a week? Do you know? Uh-huh. There are seven days in a week. And if there's seven days times four weeks is about, is how many days? Hmm? 28. It's 28-ish, right? Because, uh, yeah. Actually, it's exactly 28. Does it look if... I started my project early, so it was more than that when I started. So yes, it is 28. All right, so I have something for you. 28 days till Christmas, till the new season comes, when we celebrate the birth of God's love into the world in a big way when Jesus is born, right? But for now, we wait. And so I have one of these for each family. Atticus and Aviar, yours is elsewhere. 
Okay. This is your Advent calendar. Some of the adults are reading devotionals. This is your Advent calendar. You can hang that on the fridge if you want, or you can lay it on a table. And every day, you, you're going to start right here with this red one on the bottom. And you're going to go this way and come back this way, just like reading, or like days on a calendar, right? And inside here, you're going to pull that out. And inside, I want you to look for two things. Don't see the candy and go, awesome, and stop. That's not what this is about, okay? There's a treat in there, but there's a little piece of paper that's folded up. And the thing I love about this is that this is not your traditional Advent calendar. This calendar was made when someone who lives far, pretty far away from us shared an idea. She interviewed a bunch of kids about things that can't wait and things that are hard to wait for. So every day you get to see another thing that somebody that's close to your age said, you know what? This is a really hard thing to wait for, or this is something that can't wait. And at the end of all of it, it's like, and thank you, God. There's always something to be grateful for. And now you're going to see things, you only do one a day, okay? And talk about practicing waiting. You can't start until December 1st. Okay, there's 24. Oh, I know, right? That's going to be hard for you. Uh -huh. Can't start until December 1st. So you can take it, and you can't start until Thursday. That's December 1st. And you just take out one every day, and that helps you to count down to the joy of Christmas, right? When Jesus' love is born in us again. Okay, so while you're waiting, I want to. Uh huh, you have a question, buddy? That is the Christmas one. You are so, that is supposed to be a star. I adore you. You figured that out. Yes, the yellow one on the top is Christmas. So that'll be, when that one comes, you'll know it's Christmas Eve. Okay, so just one a day. And while you're waiting, right, some of the things in there will be funny. Some of the things might make you laugh. Like, what's, what's something that's hard to wait for? Birthdays are in there. But what also can't wait? A fart. But it's part of who we are, right? That's how God made us. So we're grateful for that. So there's lots of things in there. And as you're going through this, you're going to have good days. Think times when things are really happy and times when things are sad. When things are sad, when you're waiting, I want you to look for the helpers. Look for the God sightings all around you to remind you that even when we're waiting, God is with us. And I also want you to try to be a helper. Show God's love. Try to be a sign of hope and joy for someone. Yes, Atticus. Oh, thank you. All right. So can you pray with me? All right. Thank you, God, for loving us and being with us when we're waiting, especially when it's hard. Be with us, God, as we walk in lots of ways toward Christmas. And all along the way, help us show your love in all the ways we can. Amen. All right. So I have one of these for family. So Kalia, you can take this. Can you take that with you? Remember, Thursday is your first day. You're going to start there, okay? This will not stay. Okay, and then what? Daphne and brothers, what color do you want? Do you want blue? Blue, red, or green? You want red? <laughs> so the family consensus is green? Okay. <laughs> Daphne's like anything to get us out of here. <laughs> All right. So you can take that with you. Okay, you got it? All right. Jade, do you want one? Okay, you can go grab the blue one. I will. <laughs> you get one of them for your family. Otherwise, it'd take up a ton of space in your house, buddy, right? Okay. Perfect.
You want to hold it on both sides. So you want to take that back, and you can come back and get your treat. And while you guys are picking out your treat, the rest of us are going to stand and join together in singing Canticle of the Turning. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight and a servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name Waiting. The days are growing shorter. There's far less daylight, which means that the darkness is around us so much more in a lot of ways. This is the feeling of Advent. Because in this season of Advent, we are called to linger, to linger in the recognition that in too many ways, the world is not as God intends for it to be. And we, we try to, to sit in that in this season. We try to see it, and we try to be honest about it as we name it, while we remember with great and hopeful anticipation that God is coming in a new way in Jesus the Christ. But now we wait. During Advent in faith, we embrace the hope that, that the world can be different than what it is. 
On this first Sunday of Advent, we encounter the prophet Habakkuk, who is determined to station himself on the wall and watch, to wait for God to respond to his lament. Oh Lord, how long should I cry out for help and you will not listen? Or cry out to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise, so the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. Things are not right, he cries out. They're not right, God. Do something about it. From the references that we have in Scripture, it's believed that Habakkuk lived during a time when the, the powerful and ruthless Assyrian Empire was in decline and the fierce and ruthless Babylonian Empire was on the rise. But in, in this in-between time, without established leadership, there's this, this vacuum and chaos and lawlessness prevail. To make matters worse, because of the famine that is in the land, there's this, this fierce competition for very limited resources. So most of the people are starving. Starving for food, they're starving for safety, they're starving for justice. In, in a lot of ways, the picture that's painted here in our scripture today, it reminds me of the, the westward migration of the pioneers. During that period in our history, we often refer to it as the Wild West because it was a time when, when it was really precarious and unpredictable out there on the frontier. It seemed like, like bandits had their way and no matter how often people banded together, there was no assurance of safety. We heard the prophet cry out today, God, we're living in your way. We are. We're following the instructions that you gave us for how to live life together. But, but God, what good is it when we're surrounded by people who don't? How long can this go on, God? How long will I cry out to you and you won't listen? How long? How long will we cry out to you, O oh God? We can relate to that, can't we? When we are suffering, when everything that we know how to do just isn't working, and it feels like the world is, is falling apart, we cry out, how long, O oh God, must we see and experience another mass shooting? Our children have grown up in a time where they haven't not known what it's like to have to do an Alice drill in the schools to prepare for such a thing. Why? Why is hatred toward others on the rise? And why in a time when we know so much and we are so connected to one another, how can war, war with our neighbors, be a thing like in Russia and Ukraine. And the climate changes, God. How much uncertainty can we endure before you answer us? The prophet cries out his lament. And you know what? He is dedicated. He's so dedicated to this relationship with God that he doesn't just voice this complaint. He's committed to keeping watch. He is committed to waiting for God to see how God responds. The prophet here is going to wait no matter how long it takes because in his radical hope, he trusts that God will. So he waits. I wonder, how do we keep watch? waiting for God to show up or respond. What does this even look like? 
Perhaps for some of us, it's, it's prayer on our own or with a group, or it's meditation times. Maybe it's worship or a commitment to surround ourselves with friends or a supportive community of people who are also committed to looking for the God sightings. For some, keeping watch may mean a commitment to staying in relationship with people who have a way of pushing all our buttons. But we stay, and we keep watch for how God can work in and through that person and in and through that relationship, how God can work on us as we stay. Or maybe it's some combination of all of these things for you. To keep watch is to be open to God's response, especially when God doesn't show up in the way that we expect God to show up. When we keep watch, we seek to be open to God responding to our cries through the people and places that we might least expect to see God. God does show up. Because the steadfast love of God endures forever. And the recognition of this is what leads the prophet to his affirmation of faith and even his rejoicing. Why? Because he knows that God is there. All this bad stuff wasn't happening because God wasn't there. God was there. God was there. God was not making the bad stuff happen. Can I say that again? God was not making the bad stuff happen, and God does not make the bad stuff happen in our lives today. But God is there. God is there working in and through the suffering and the hardship. God is here. God is here and still, still there is disease and famine. God is here and still there is violence and cancer and heartache and awfulness. And, and there is radiance and light and beauty and warmth. There is hope and there is joy. This is Advent. And that can be a really uncomfortable thing for us. The tension of the, the already and the what is yet to come. Life, even a life of faith, is both. It's the already and the not yet. And God is in the midst. God is all over all of it. So we persist. We persist in faith with a radical, determined hope. One of the quotes that I saw this week speaks to the tenaciousness of hope, and I'm sharing it with you because I love it so much. People speak of hope as if it is this delicate, ephemeral thing made of whispers and spider webs. It's not. Hope has dirt on her face, blood on her knuckles, and the grit of cobblestones in her hair. And she just spat out a tooth as she rises from another go. I love this quote. Especially because it's a very stark reminder to us that life, as much as we might like it to be, Life is not like a sitcom. Life and all of its struggles and hardships and suffering does not get all wrapped up and made all better in 30 minutes with delightful music to close it out. The world is messy and hard and lovely and filled with moments of incredible joy and hope. Faith-filled hope, my friends, does not give up and it does not give in. It trusts even when it seems ridiculous. It trusts in the steadfast love of God who is with us, 
even in the brokenness of our lives and the life of the world. It trusts in the steadfast love of God that promises to be born among us in new ways, in the one who is to come, the one who knows that the radical love of, and presence of God does not mean that there is no suffering and that there is no hardship, the one who showed us that the way forward is through the trouble and not around us, the one the, around it, the one who showed us that just loving him and him being present doesn't mean that the bad and the hard stuff goes away, but what he does assure us is that he's always there. Not for a moment does he ever leave. So I pray that in this season of Advent that we might keep watch, looking for the God sightings as we actively wait. I pray that we may keep watch as we seek to be God sightings for others to let the light of God's love shine through us in the darkness. Look for the light. Look for the signs of hope. And write it down so that you may be strengthened and encouraged by it when you need the reminder that God is here. Amen. Friends, as we come to these moments where we are invited to be grateful and generous, I invite you to hear these words of St. Teresa of Avila. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks with compassion on this world. Our hands, our feet, our faces, our generosity is how the light of God's love is shown, how it's revealed in its radiance and glory in the world when we accept the invitation to give generously as God has been generous with us. Friends, we share our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings in a number of ways here at Ebenezer United Church of Christ. Some give electronically through automatic giving, some donate through the website, others use the drop box at church, and still others prefer to share their offering in worship. Please note that if you prefer to share your offering in worship, there are offering plates at both of the exits as you leave the sanctuary this morning. So now friends, as we prepare to dedicate our offerings, we are also going to dedicate these amazing prayer shawls that you see all around you. So, if you feel comfortable doing it, I would encourage you to please stand so that every single one of these, well, I wish our little friends were all here, every single one of these blankets has someone touching it in some way if possible. So, you can, use, you can touch two, use an elbow, <laughs> however we want to do that. <laughs> Perfect. You know what? I'm going to come down there, too. Can I give you this mirror? Sure. Thanks. All right. So now, together, we pray, open our eyes, Holy One, to see with renewed vision, to acknowledge what is good and what is bad, and to never let go of the hope that can transform us. Bless, we pray, these prayer shawls and prayer blankets. They have been created with love and compassion to be a sign of hope and prayerful blessing for others. May all who are wrapped in them be warmed by your tender nurture and embraced with the promise of your abundant presence. We dedicate these and our offerings, O oh God, to your purpose for our ministry with and for the world. All that we offer is our grateful response to your great love for us and for all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Thank you, friends. You may be seated. As we take a moment to focus on our life together, I do want to, um, first and foremost in your mind, put that there's a table out there as you uh, in the gathering area near the Sunday School hallway. Please take a moment to stop by that and sign your name to the letters that will be sent to our college students as they receive their, their care package script cards. If you haven't had the opportunity yet to um, share something with the college students, it's like, oh, I was going to contribute toward that. Well, Julie Munz is here this morning. It is never too late. And so if you would like to participate in that um, with your offering, but especially with your signature, please make sure you do that before you leave the church today. Friends, the... Christmas Fund offering is one of the five special offerings of the United Church of Christ, and it will be dedicated here at Ebenezer on Sunday, December 18th. The season of Advent is a season of waiting and watching, and it's also a season of preparing. Our generosity prepares the way for hope, peace, justice, and community. United Church of Christ retired clergy committed their lives to burying and marrying, baptizing and blessing, teaching and preaching, comforting and empowering God's people. And now through the Christmas Fund for the Veterans of the Cross, we have the opportunity to sustain and empower them. It's our chance to give back to them. Our gifts of gratitude and love bring hope to the hopeless, joy to the sorrowful, and deep love to those who have ministered in God's love for so long. By generously giving to the Christmas Fund, we help retired clergy to maintain health insurance and meet emergency needs. Year after year, our gifts make a difference, easing the anxiety of constant financial worries. Last year, the Christmas Fund, administered by the pension boards of the UCC, provided over 1.6 million in pension and health benefit supplementation, in emergency grants, and thank you checks to retired servants of the church. Every cent of the money that was shared came from people who sit in the pews. People like you, people like me. So I ask that we prayerfully consider sharing our gifts with the Christmas Fund. Daryl, if you would be so kind as to click on in the announcements, there's like, I think, four slides in a row that show all of the different ways that we can be giving during this season. I'm not going to go through the whole list of them, but if you just kind of go through those, Daryl, that would be appreciated. Um, the one I do want to lift up is Joy Tree, which is the Beacon of Hope Ministry Outreach to jail um, deten people that are being held in detention in helping them get their children um, Christmas gifts. I do have six families total, 21 children that we're going to be helping. If you're interested, please see me after church today. There's a slip of paper by the Joy Tree that gives you my name, my phone number, my AOL email account. Yes, AOL. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but um, give me a call if you're interested and want to talk a little bit more about it. Thank you. So, friends, you did see um, baby items for the bassinet. What I want to lift up this morning is on December 18th. That is the day of the kids' Christmas program here at church. And we would also like to use that day to celebrate, um, have a baby shower here. And when I lifted that up the other day to some of the ladies in the gathering area, they're like, oh, a baby shower for who? I'm like, Jesus? <laughs> so, so those items we will then give to Mary's room and items that they can't take will be given to another organization in the community. So lots of ways to plug in and to help to be actively preparing as we wait. And as we're doing all that stuff, we might get hungry, huh, Brian? <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's me again. That can only mean one thing. <laughs> we got our grilled chicken dinner coming up. As you can see up there, we got our guest of honor for this one, Foghorn Leghorn, along with his little chicken hawk friend. Um, we've been doing this now 15 years, Bob. So we thank everybody for your past support, and we thank you for your future support. And... 
This uh, meal will be the first Sunday in May. I believe it's the 7th. Um, and unlike other things in life, our prices are not going up. Oh. So can you, if you need Christmas gifts or chicken or stocking stuffers, you know, can you think of anything better to give? Mm. You always got to have food, right? So... And uh, starting next week, Sunday, our lovely ladies will be perched out at the comma counter again, eagerly waiting to sell you tickets. And that will go through the last Sunday in uh, December. So thank you. Thanks, Brian. Talk about a symbol of tenacious hope. That little chicken hawk, right? And dirt in his hair and spitting out a tooth. Look for the signs that God is here. Look for the signs of hope. It might creep up on you and just surprise you with joy. Uh, for those of you who have spent any time around me in the last couple of weeks, you know, I've just, I've been really weepy lately. And it's just so much suffering. And I know God's there. It's just hard to see human suffering. <laughs> and to know that it's there, and there's not a whole lot sometimes that we feel we can do about it. And then we are surprised by moments of joy that inspire incredible hope. On Friday night, my daughter and my dad and I went to the ballet. Does my dad rock or what? <laughs> we went to the ballet. It was the Ukrainian ballet company. They did Sleeping Beauty. And Julian Yetzer announced before that that uh, it had been exactly one year ago that night that they had been in Sheboygan at the Stephanie Weil Center to share Cinderella. In that time, between last year and this year, their country has been invaded. And yet, they persist in sharing beauty and grace and joy. Who knows what the experience of their families are back home. And yet, they persist and they share beauty and joy. And if that wasn't enough, I was like, oh, I was grateful for the God sighting. At the very end, these two adorable little girls came out with flowers and Ukrainian flags. Be the helpers. Look for the signs and let that give you a passion to be a sign of God's love. Because God is here. We just need to show up and be brighter than the hate. We need to be warmer than the cold shoulders. Be a sign of hope. God will make it happen. So as we wait for the day, for the vision of God's love making the world right, let's stand and join together in singing my favorite song, and I don't care how ridiculous you think it is, it's my favorite Advent song. Please stand and join with me in singing, That Was the Year.
the hills, all the doors swinging wide. At the prisons and the zoos, they pour into the street, and all heaven broke loose. They met up at the park, convicts and kangaroos. So we packed up some food, rode our bikes in. Now, my friends, I pray that you may go in peace as we enter into the season of active waiting, trusting that things have started turning round and knowing that in all things, the steadfast love of God goes with us. Amen. <laughs>